Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of the Monsters Den. Today, the episode you've all been asking for. Guys, you got to do more hammer horror. You got to do more hammer, 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 hammer horror. I'm going to go one further. We're going to rank our 10 favorite hammer films, right? Or hammer horror films. We might have some mysteries and thrillers thrown in there. So we've got in the house today, we got Mr. Dan Brown, Mr. Chris Sallow, Mr. Rich Catino, and uh, everybody's got their list ready to go. We're excited to talk about hammer and uh, Dan, I'm going to have you kick us off with your first selection. Okay. Well, as I always do, I, I really have a hard time putting things in my favorite down to my least favorite. I like all Hammer. And I know that out of seven vampire films, at least with Christopher Lee, uh, as I said earlier, I know a couple of people are going to say Horror of Dracula. And I do like Horror of Dracula. Uh, but I, it's not my favorite. And I'm going to go with Dracula, Prince of Darkness. Um, why I go with that film, and I like it so much, it came out in 66 which was kind of like almost a 50 yard line with uh, Hammer Films and their horror entry. They really had it down to a science. And although they had tried to do two prequels or two sequels to Dracula with Brides and, and Kiss of the Vampire, it wasn't until 66 when um, Christopher Lee came back. Um, the basic setup, I mean, you know, couple, two couples off to a castle, uh, somebody gets bit, somebody gets literally drained. And I love how they bring Christopher Lee back. Yeah, uh, hanging him up like a stuck pig, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and having a drip on his ashes, and then just going right along. Uh, Lee looks so pale; he looks really like like he just came back from the dead. And the whole fact of like um, the sharpshooting priest in the end, and the falling through the ice because he can't cross running water, dealing with some of the earlier vampire things. I find it one of the more you know. I, I love them all, but this one, and since it took eight years to make it, uh, I was really impressed with it. And it's probably my favorite Dracula film that he did uh, overall. It's a great one. It is It is a great one. It's great too that he's got, that, uh, Christopher Lee's got no dialogue, which is None. unbelievable. No, he, like, hated, un he hated not having any dialogue, right? Right. It, it's unbelievable that, uh, but it, it still works great. He's, yeah. Yeah, it's all there, about his presence, really. Yeah, he had he had this certain presence. He was very, he was tall. Well, he was six five almost, and he mm. just was statuesque. He was handsome in many respects. Uh, he didn't exactly wear evening clothes. Um, you know, it's 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 funny when you talk about his dialogue. Is that you know this is one of the few album films he had no dialogue. And the funny thing is, there's two stories about him with dialogue, and that is number one. He had said one time in an interview that he had read the script for some of the Dracula films. I don't know if it was this one in particular. He said the, the dialogue was so horrible, he refused to use it. Uh, they've checked the archives and they've never found um, any like earlier scripts with a lot of dialogue. They've never found anything like that. So the other one is that he was getting paid by the word because he only got paid a little bit of money to do horror Dracula. They made him a ton, a boatload of money on that film. And he started charging him by the line. And, and Hammer, uh, that's another rumor, I don't know how true it is, and Hammer, really, strangely enough, as lush as their movies look, uh, they were quite well photographed. Uh, they look a lot bigger than the budgets that they had. Yeah, no considering one, yeah so, and th that's, that's what they say about him, but I think him not speaking is, is a much more animalistic, mysterious way of not oh, saying sure. And uh, that's my, some of my trivia I throw in. Yeah. <laughs> Spend hours of tr useless trivia. <laughs> Your first. No, he definitely, he definitely uh, brought to life the Belagosi. That's what he did. Oh, yeah. I like, very different. You know, Belagosi was cool, but yeah, Christopher Lee brought it to life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. Um, all right. So my 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 number ten, uh, Blood from the Mummy's Tomb. And uh, there's two two reasons for that, Pete. The left one and the right one. <laughs> I mean, uh, Valerie Leone is gorgeous. <laughs> I yeah, mean, I is this even a mummy movie? It doesn't fucking matter. She's gorgeous. Uh, you know, she lies there naked, gives the best under, not naked, best under boob in the history of cinema. Um, and and the, the, that's it. Uh, that's, uh, you know, I don't have it. I, I was looking through my collection. So I had yeah. to write, write it down. I'm like, uh -oh, okay. I got to buy this Blu-ray. Blu-ray is really good, by the way. It's awesome. Really good. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? That is actually a fun movie. And it it's, is. It's more in, in, in all honesty. 
yeah. it's not like it's a bad movie at, at all. Um, you know, I'm just poking a little fun that uh, this gorgeous woman is this, you know, uh, Egyptian descendant reincarnation or whatever. Yeah, yeah it, kind of, it kind of you know reminds me. You start to think about it. Um, a little bit of Black Sunday with, with like how you know the, the two the one the one girl plays the two roles and the yep. one's a descendant or whatever. But uh, yeah, Blood from the Mummies too. Uh, that's she that's, is arguably. And there's a lot of them, but she is arguably one of the most beautiful women to ever grace Hammer's film. Oh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'd pay good money to see her in a cat fight with uh, Caroline Monroe. That's for sure. <laughs> there's the other one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Madeline Smith. Yeah. Ingrid no, Hutt. I mean, we yeah. can go on and on here, right? No doubt. Yeah, absolutely. With, yeah, which if you talk about, you know, Hammer as a whole, boy, they nailed it with getting. You know, I, I was watching the five million years to earth and they had Hazel Court in it. And I'm like, oh God, boy, she's just gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. Dan, did you have a comment? Yeah, I was gonna say, let's 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 call it, let's call an ace and ace and a spade a spade. Uh, I think one of the reasons why many of us loved hammer horror films is they just they were they were a, a, coming into puberty boys like fantasy. Uh, they had no problem with showing bosoms and so forth um and that and and there were gorgeous women yeah and i think yeah. that has it has a lot of hormonal effects that's why everybody remembers fondly you know we, we don't sit there and visualize evelyn keys in our head from universal pictures right. but for right. some reason we'll picture these little court or my favorite ingrid pitt uh oh, you know of course yeah <laughs> you know that's you saying oh well, yes and uh that's what i think it is they knew how to sell sex no yeah. doubt yeah they knew it and nobody was really showing it like that no. in movies at no. that time. And, you know, you, you, gotta, you, you know, people forget too. Okay, what was before this was the the Universal movies in black and white. Yeah. So now they're yeah. in color. You've got you've got actual blood on screen, and right. um, and you've got gorgeous women showing unbelievable cleavage or underboob yeah, or underboob <laughs> yeah. or overboob or whatever. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't. I'm done after that one. That's that's the best. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you haven't seen it, you got to see it. Rich. What? You got to see it. I have, I have to watch it. I, you always hear about. You always hear about. It's always side boob, but now there's the under boob. No, this is under boob, oh. right, Pete? Yeah, or a little both. I don't. I don't even. It's, yeah. Oh my god. It's side under whole boob. It's great boob, regardless. Right? It's great. It's under great. over sideways, whatever. It's uh... incredible. What's your first pick of the day? You know. I, I can't even speak after that one. I'm done. <laughs> so I'll, I'm going to start with uh, The Devil Rides Out just because of the, the the Satanism thing going on, the occult thing. Now it really Ooh. wasn't going on at the time. I mean, what other movies were like that at that time? It was pretty groundbreaking, actually. Yeah. yeah. Even though there's not, it's not really over the top or anything. Christopher Lee's in it and he speaks a lot. He speaks unlike he does in the uh, and he's, he's very a little face. in Dracula. Yeah. In fact, I think but, he went on record saying that was his favorite role in any Hammer movie that he yeah. did, right? Did yeah. He? Yeah. Well, he was pivotal in getting the script because right. it was, I think it was written by an author by the name of Dennis Wheatley. Dennis Wheatley, think, yeah. Wheatley. You can, you and can Wheatley, yeah. Look and he that. had written a number of books uh, containing a couple of the characters. Uh, they were probably like the British version of um, like one of those. Uh, I love a mystery radio show, like a crime fighting team uh, type mm. of thing. But they made a couple of books on that. He did, he was his favorite. he was pivotal into bringing that to the to the show to that film yeah. or having it be made. It, it holds up really yeah, well. It it's does. based on a 1934 novel of the same name by Dennis Wheatley, written yeah. by Richard Matheson, mm -hmm. directed by Terrence Fisher. Yep, Terrence Fisher. Yeah, I'm I'm a fan. So, it's a little weird. It's a little, you know, odd, but I, I still enjoy it. Yeah. You know, yeah. So for something that really wasn't like that around at the time, you know, and the devil, when does he show up? Once when he's up on that, you know, with the horns and the furry suit. And, and it's such a great scene, too. Yeah, it is. It just pops up out of nowhere. He just shows up out of nowhere. <laughs> the goat of right. him. When, he, when he manifests Golden into yeah. the into the form of a person, he's that the black dude with like the little robe on or something. And that's it. It's so weird like you'd expect it to be something a little more devilish looking until he shows up later you know but yeah it's, it's cool it's entertaining for what it is i like it yeah 
it also, you know, the funny thing is it, it holds up well after 50 something years uh, mm -hmm. as a film, because, you know, there are certain films like all the witchcraft films they've made in the 60s, 70s. I remember when I, I remember seeing, what was that thing? Uh, Brotherhood of Satan with Strother Martin, that horror film. Um, mm -hmm. And I saw that years ago. And when it kind of finally came out on VHS, like, oh, great. I can't wait to see this again. And I put it on. I fell asleep. It was just not what didn't hold up time wise. Uh, now, even as exciting as it is, Race with the Devil uh, with uh, Peter, it just feels kind of short souled. It's, it could have been much longer and bigger. The Devil, uh, devil Rides Out, maybe because the British, British aspect of it, you got the later Eric Blowfield, uh, what's his name, playing uh, the bad guy. Uh, he played Eric Blowfield, Charles Gray. Uh, he played right. Eric Blowfield in Diamonds of Forever. Charles Gray, um, yeah. You know, it, it just holds up very well, and it's and it's a straight on horror. There's no there's no tongue in cheek. It's mm -hmm. and it's and that's yeah. why I think it's really good. You know, other than like Rosemary's Baby, very few very few hold up. Yeah, yeah, it explores explores the occult and Satanism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Good choice. All right, my number ten. I'm going to go 1971's uh, Doctor Jekyll and Sister Hyde. Nice. Okay. Big fan of this because I, I love the, the whole, you know, Robert Louis Stevenson, Dr. Jekyll, and Mr. Hyde story uh, itself. And they've kind of remade that story so many times. And I thought this did a really great job of kind of sexing it up a little bit. I mean, you know, I mean, doesn't get any better than a guy who does a lot of these experiments and changes himself basically into the female twin of himself, right? And uh, of course, you know, you got, uh, I got, what was her name again? Uh, Martine Beswick. That's the one, yes. Who is also another right. Hammer Beauty, right? And she was also oh, for in sure. the historic uh, women, right? Uh, film. And Ralph Bates was. Uh, Ralph Bates is awesome. really good. Yeah. And, and it's just a really, and I love like the last like half hour when, uh, he's kind of like, you know, conflicted because you got both sides trying to uh, gain superiority over this this body. Right. And uh, it's just a really well crafted film. Again, it's not like over the top horror. It's not like it's bloody or anything like that. But I love how, you know, the evil side of him is a female. Right. And they that kind of, you know, it's just it's just a really well crafted yeah fun film and uh you know other than like the original silent film with uh, john barrymore and of course the classic 1931 uh dr jekyll and mr hyde this is probably my third favorite out of all the jekyll hyde films i, I really dig it quite a bit so that's my number 10 back to you man yeah oh, it's a, it's oh, a great one that's like the first full-blown uh, cross-dressing uh, horror film uh other than dress to kill and then maybe the short stint of norman bates but um all right next up what am i gonna go oh the gorgon uh, from 1964 and um, what I like about this film what I've always liked about this film is that number one it's the first reteaming of um, nice. Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing Peter since Cushing. Dracula and uh, Frankenstein films reteaming uh, the film is just they, it's bathed in mystery you never really see the Gorgon you know that you know, what people are being calcified Typical situation. There's a castle in the whole situation. The only weak spot of the whole film is, and actually, Christopher Lee said this: the special effects of showing the Gorgon or the Medusa's head. They have snakes on it, and uh, it looks like really bad yeah. test footage uh, from Ray Harryhausen. Um, really bad test footage, mm -hmm. but because it is it is you know it is different it's the first teaming and i think this is the first time they realized because in those first few years they were dealing with traditional monsters werewolf frankenstein the mummy dracula and also this was their first foray i believe uh into a new monster did you say it was 1964 because that was the date right was it 60 i think it was 64 um, 64 yeah yeah and it, it was very much like an, you know and i think by the mid 60s you know i, I love a lot of the, the um, Hammer, standalone horror films. Kind of like I love the X-Files standalone episodes. I couldn't buy into the conspiracy, but I like that. But the Gorgon, other than the ending with the really bad uh, wire snakes or puppeteer snakes, uh, it's all good. <laughs> I, I, I think it's a great film, actually. Yeah. Good choice. All right, Chris, what do you got next? Um, all right, my number nine is uh, The Curse of Frankenstein. Uh, which is this that uh, new double disc Blu-ray uh, that came out, and um, 
Dan, uh, you know, Christopher Lee is really great as uh, Frankenstein. I think he's even more uh, sympathetic Frankenstein than uh, than Karloff. But wow, Peter Cushing is just unbelievable. I mean, he, um, to me, you know, to tie it into wrestling terms, man, he is really the guy that works unbelievable either as a baby face or a heel. And holy shit, he is the worst fucking heel in this movie. He is such a scumbag. It's <laughs> unbelievable. Holy shit. Like he is like, he's like the biggest heel in the history of Hammer in this, in this movie. Uh, but it uh, still holds up uh, still really well. Uh, I wish we had more of Christopher Lee um, as Frankenstein in the movie. Um, but really it's um, yeah, really the monster truly is Dr. Frankenstein. Yeah. Uh, in this. Yeah. Movie. He is in all those movies. Yeah, Pretty much. but like this, this one I yeah. think takes the cake. He was born to play that role. I mean, oh, for on. sure. Yeah, you know, yeah. And the way he treats his cousin, right, who's so in love with him. Oh my god, like dirt throughout that entire movie. Right? Oh, you know, and it's so funny because he, you buddy, know, he, brings, right? he treats him like crap too. It's like right. he he brings in the cousin to marry her, and then you know, you then you find out he's he's screwing the the uh, the maid, the maid, and he knocked her off, and he's like, I'm not marrying you, you piece of jerk dirt get out of here <laughs> i'm gonna have my monster kill you when you're not looking i mean it, it's just crazy yeah and there's seven movies in this series yeah i'm yeah. just looking at them now that's the first one curse of frankenstein yeah this is the first hammer yeah. horror this is the one that curse frankenstein the one that did it all yeah yeah really now, i remember correctly he was in every one of the frankenstein films but one right yes uh i can't Ralph remember bates was in one of them yeah. yeah, one of the later ones, right? The second to the last one, I think. Yeah, they, they the were really Frankenstein. Yeah, yeah, I think it's horror. That, that's, 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 tongue, that's a tongue, that's a tongue in cheek film, actually. Really, yeah. it's not. It's not on a serious note, if I'm not mistaken. But anyhow, go ahead, I'm sorry. So yeah, oh, yeah, that's that's a good one. Yeah, that is. All right, Rich, back to you. All right, I'm picking um, the. I picked the Gorgon also. I threw that in my oh. my tent. All the same reason that you said. And what they should have done with the Medusa when they showed her is if they would have done it further away, the shot, it probably would have looked okay. But those close-ups are atrocious. <laughs> it's you like know? these little rubber snakes that just kind of like yeah, bob up and down. It doesn't right? work. I think they were on but wires. The movie's got a cool atmosphere to it. You know, it's moody. It's got atmosphere. The locations are really cool. So, yeah, that's got it going for it. You know, and, and having the Gorgon, you know, brought into this universe is cool too but yeah that's the one the one thing that just doesn't work is that doing those snakes they just didn't work well i'm surprised like after they did it and they filmed it they didn't say let's try something different you know do it a further away shot yeah it's just I thought they look. did a pretty good job at least through most of the movie of of you know kind of like the the who is the gorgon right and then the, the big reveal and mm. which kind of when they revealed it it totally made sense but they kind of kept that uh you know a little under under yeah. the rug for a little bit right yeah mm. yeah that's a good one right I, i've always liked that one all yeah. right my next choice from 1974 is the final film in the frankenstein series i really like this one a lot frankenstein and the monster from hell this one is just like off the wall crazy and again you know it's it's I, we've talked so many times about how hammer and universal had real problems with continuity from film to film to film so all of a sudden you know you got victor who's like like head doctor in a prison right meanwhile he should have been dead years ago right that for every single film he's supposed to be put to death or whatever he always winds up living so here he is he somehow has some dirt on the warden of the prison so he now is incognito working as a doctor in the prison and of course he's doing all sorts of experiments because he wants to continue doing his work so he winds up creating another creature based on body parts of some pretty interesting other prisoners within you know this place here you know so one guy is like a violinist another guy is like a genius so he's kind of like putting little little pieces together to create this absolutely hideous uh, creature who is played by David Prowse, of course, who went mm -hmm. on to uh, play uh, what Chewbacca, right? Or was it Darth Vader? Darth Vader. Darth Vader. David Prowse, yeah, did Darth Vader, yeah. So he's got like you know, and I think the 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 main 
body was this like strong man and he's like ultra hairy and they put the eyes of some other guy the the, the light touch of the violinist i mean it's all wacky and it's got madeline smith in the in the film who plays his mute assistant she of course was from the vampire lovers and uh, uh the blonde dude i'm forgetting his name he was also in uh, a couple other movies in hammer too but it's just a wacky wacky film that again you know just shows you what a scumbag uh, Victor Frankenstein was played by <laughs> Peter Cushing and uh, you know and, and, and you know and the guy the warden is a total piece of crap too he's such a low life guy so there's really like nobody in this film that you can actually root for other right. than the monster right. and right. Madeline Smith the, the mute assistant they become friends right so uh, again the monster is not the monster in these films at all it's it's Mr. Yeah. Victor Frankenstein. So yeah. I like this one a lot. I think this one's a hoot, and uh, you know it's got a really wild ending too, which I won't give away. But uh, yeah, that that would be the last one. Is I'm uh, look at the information about it. There's censored scenes that's restored to the DVD. Do you know if that's in oh that for version? sure? I remember yeah. buying the VHS. I mean, I remember seeing it as a kid, and you know, I mean, when I saw the picture of of David Prowse in Famous Monsters scared the shit out of me that's the scheme for my money the he scariest you guys know what was in censored? the history like, of cinema so but yeah there's like a scene where they take the brain out yeah uh, and, and then the brain falls like on the in the floor in like a bowl and then they accidentally yeah. step on it and yeah. i remember in yeah. the 80s buying a vhs of it and i was so psyched to bring it home from from suncoast the video store at the mall and i you know i yeah. watched it it was cut mm -hmm. it was yeah. it had all the all the good gore scenes were cut um, so yeah, there there are various versions of it. Yeah, that but that was a big that was a big a big item on the collector's market. Was the yeah. uncut version? I yeah, think it was right. it was released in Europe, uh, right. uncut. And I'm wondering, the Peter, you have it? Is it is yours yeah, uncut? You have it. Yeah, it's uncut. 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 Did they restore it? Yeah. Okay, because I was curious if they have, because that's some of the shortcomings you run into uh, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah I believe is, that uh, one is uncut. Green Factor. This is uncut. And Chris, if I remember correctly, cool. the scene, and I, without giving too much away, there's the scene late in the film where the prisoners turn on the monster. Yes. And there's all sorts of, you know, stuff being pulled yeah, that's, around. That's, yeah. in this, that's in this. Yeah. That, yeah. Course, course, that out also years that, ago. That plot line, that whole storyline is basically ripped off uh, when they did Beyond Reanimator, where Jeffrey Coombs' character, the doctor, is yes. in a prison. And he is the prison doctor, and he's trying to recreate his uh, experiments. And of course, the prisoners get involved, and I think the even the uh, even the the warden is yeah, he's a scumbag. Yeah. But I think they ripped it off, not verbatim, but they ripped it off to get the basics for the plot. Of course, nobody's yeah. seen Beyond Reanimators. Who cares? Uh, I hated it. <laughs> I've seen it, but yeah, I own it. <laughs> I, I, so do I. Sorry, who in this room doesn't own it? <laughs> At this point, I, I hated it. Yeah, I did. I oh, fucking hated it. Very disappointed by it. Yeah, I know? was. I was crushed. I was like, oh god. Uh, I, as soon as I saw like the, the was it the fucking penis or something had fingers yeah. and was running around. I was like, this is no. Was that Bri was that Bride a Reanimator? No, that was like an eyeball on a hand. Yes, I think they used the penis in the third one. I know. Well, I remember something walking around in the prison, and I'm like, this is a fucking joke. Like, yes, that. Yes, I know sure Reanimator right. was is funny. But I'm like, this is now you're resorting to dick jokes. Like this is stupid. But I don't want to wasted talent, it. wasted story. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right, Dan, back to you. Okay, uh, we're gonna go with um, next one. Hmm. Let's see. Well, I Devil Rides Out was one of my picks. I knew that was gonna be a tough one to avoid. You know, like this, but it is a good one. Uh, actually, I, I really weren't Maniac from 1963, uh, and why I like Maniac, and the thing about Maniac is, I, yep, I remember Maniac uh, seeing it the first time and being, um, it's got a lot of tw plot to I mean, first off, it's they're, what they're taking, uh, let's, like in The Brides of Dracula, let's feel sorry for the guy in the asylum. Let's get him out. You know, that's not going to help. It's not going to end up being very good. And, but the thing is, there's a lot of little plot twists in the film that it keeps you going. You know, there's a lot of like backstabbing going on. It's got Kerwin Matthews, who was in, um, God, the uh, Worlds of Gulliver. He was also in, I think, uh, Sinbad. Seven Boys Sinbad. Sinbad, yeah. Yeah, and, um, but anyhow, nonetheless, it's, it's a film that's great the first time out because there's a lot of little plots and twists. It also takes place in France. 
And, but you see it a second time. It's like watching like the sixth sense. You know, the first time you watch it, you get all the hints. Oh, like, wow, this is really good. And then when you get the punchline at the end, if you ever decide to watch it again, it's just, no, it's not there. Uh, Maniac is very, it's very, not hard to swallow, but it's not as, doesn't hold up. And I think I based my enjoyment on it on the fact they were dealing with a homicidal maniac. Um, I mean, the poster, as, as it was on, uh, on Chris's um, package, you know, he's got an acetylene torch and a pair of sunglasses. I mean, this guy is like a whack job. And it just kind of, I think it kind of came and went in the U.S. It didn't really do well. Um, but I like it because the first time and the impact it had the first time I saw it. And that's why it's there, because of the impact it made. Who doesn't love homicidal maniacs? I mean, you know. oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris, back to you. Uh, all right, uh, now it's a, it's a disc I'm looking for. It's my buddy, Sean. He and I were talking about this the other day. And he's like, did you know that the mummy is like out of print on Blu-ray? And I'm like, oh, fuck, really? I don't, I don't have it. So now, now, now I'm looking for the mummy on Blu-ray because um, I got to have it too. And man, what a... Oh, it's, not it's, in, it's not in one of these screen factory sets. I was no, just going to say, horror classic. You know, it was in one of those packs. Yeah, I'm going to have to look for one of those. All right, so this is what you get in this one. You get the mummy, Dracula's risen from the grave, taste the blood of Dracula, and Frankenstein must be destroyed. Okay, it's, the same, and it's, it's called horror classics. Yep. Same four, right. same four films that came out on the DVD version. Of yes, it. yes, yeah. Gotcha. I think the All other right. package they came the mirrors warm. the one that had the werewolf in and so forth and so on. They just put them on Blu-ray. I don't yeah. know if they did restorations, but right. You know. You have to get that one but yeah the mummy's awesome i think christopher lee is the you know like of all the of all the monsters yeah like traditionally the mummy i think has always been like to me the least scary and the least interesting but man christopher lee is fucking awesome I remember as a kid the first time when he smashes through the fucking library and yeah. uh peter cushing's got the double barrel shotgun and he shoots him in a chest and he just explodes at a, at a dust, but still keeps coming after Peter Cushing. I mean, I just un unbelievable stuff. So um, I think it's it's it's, it's a great movie, and uh, you know, I wish they Christopher Lee would have come back and done more mummy stuff. But um, but yeah, that's that's my number my number pick. That's a good one. Yeah, I like it. All right, Rich, back to you. All right, so I'm gonna pull out Dracula. Also, horror of Dracula in America. So I think I was thinking about it, why I like these so much, aside from it being, you know, the color version that brought to life with the, ter you know, terrifying life of Bela Lugosi, which you never got to see. But I also thought about it because, have you guys ever been to Wildwood, New Jersey? Yeah. Mm -hmm. South long, Jersey, long Wildwood. Time, far, far away. Do you remember far Castle time. Dracula? Yes, it was an attraction. It was a haunted house yeah. on the boardwalk mm -hmm. in Wildwood. And... I'm pretty sure when I was a kid, my family would take us down every year. And I remember seeing these movies on TV and probably Horror Dracula is one of them. And the locations, you know, that are in these with the castles that they're in, the Gothic castles. Mm -hmm. It's just like when I would go to the Wildwood Boardwalk and go into the Haunted House. I was like, it's got to be, that's the connection to my childhood, why I love it so much. You know, not only are you bringing the vampire to life instead of black and white, it's color, but he looks so much more ferocious in this. Oh yeah, dark, you know, and the castles and the locations. Oh, yeah. yeah, and the castle the locations are so cool and atmospheric. It just works so great. So I, yeah, I really like this one. I like the death in this one too, with the sunlight. Yeah, it's great. And the body that's rotting away. So yeah, that's why that's this one made my ten. And you know, quite so frankly, as much as you know, growing up, you know. Oh yeah, well that's what it's all about, right? And, yeah. Uh, you, know, you make a good point about how ferocious he looks, and quite mm -hmm. frankly, I I. I'm a huge Bela Lugosi fan. I love everything yeah. he did, and I love his Dracula, but come on. Vampires not, gotta have yeah. vampire teeth, man, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's these, Obviously, these monsters are the classics. They set the, the stage for everybody oh, yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, Hammer and Christopher Lee really brought it to life. That's what we wanted to see. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, make makes sense. Yeah, I was going to say that the reason why, I mean, I love that film. And the only reason I just didn't put it on my list, and it's, it's actually like the airline version of Dracula. It's very truncated, the whole plot line. They take a lot of things out. It moves quickly. Uh, this is one of the few things I brought here. I was a, Surprisingly, I found them in my collection. 
but you have the Warner Brothers one. I think Warner Archive came out with yeah. a version as well. I don't know if any of you guys are aware of the um, Lionsgate out of Britain, out of England. Can you see it? I'm sorry. Where am I at? Here we go. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this. Yeah, yeah, that's a Region Two. It's out of if you have a Region Two player, it works. The great thing about this, it gives you both versions: a Horror of Dracula, uh, Dracula, the original cut. Oh. They give you the four reels of the Japanese film that was in a fire that they were able to get the face melting scene to restore it. And this is also the British Film Institute's restoration of it. Uh, there is also, not to read or take up too much time, the special features, there's a new documentary called Dracula Reborn, Resurrection of Dracula, another documentary about the film's restoration, um, censoring Dracula, why and where, what had happened with it. Mm. Uh, Christopher Lee's play, uh, Demon Lover, Christopher Frailing on Dracula, all four surviving Japanese reels, The World of Hammer, Dracula and the Undead, Jenny F. Fay reads Stoker at the Vault Festival, uh, Stills production stuff, a booklet inside, and the original shooting script. And I definitely don't have all that on mine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's three, there's three to... discs. Now, it is, it is region two. Oh, you got to say one. Yeah, yeah. Two. And, it's, and it's, I think it's, you can still while. get this for yeah. 20 bucks, I think. Uh, yeah. Even on Amazon. Yeah, that's why and, I got mine. Uh, it's, this is the one that I got. And so when they came out with the Warner Archive, it's like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to beat that. It's the same restoration. Um, that's why I grabbed it as the uh, yeah the BFI restoration. So cool. that's all. That's one. one of the few toys I could show. See? <laughs> <laughs> well, all there's right. uh, there's eight Dracula movies from Hammer, inclu including The Legend of the Golden, the Seven uh, Golden oh, eight, Yeah, eight all told. Uh, the, eight yeah. all, yeah, including that. Now, in that list that you're looking at, do they have Twins of Evil in that list as well? No. Okay, because, I mean, Twins of Evil... Brides of, bride, uh, the Brides of Dracula is included. Okay, so I guess they're doing, like, Dracula type. Yeah, yeah, I, I see what they're doing. Yeah. Twins of Evil and um, what's the other one? Uh, Vampire Circus are also vampire films. Right. They're not I was going to say, I think the list Rich is reading off, it, they're not really Dracula movies. They're really more the Van Helsing movies. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. that's what ties that series together. Yeah. yeah. And then there's Kiss of the Vampire, too, which is right, supposed, exactly. to be, uh, supposed to be a lead. That was supposed to be the first, second sequel. Yeah. And I don't know why Lee didn't get involved in that. And Brides of Dracula was supposed to be slated for Christopher Lee as well. Right. So not, I got enough money to have lines for him, right? I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and the seven, the legend of the seven golden vampires has Dracula in it, but yeah. Dracula goes into the body of somebody else yeah, to do the martial Christopher arts. Christopher Lee lookalike, right? <laughs> yeah. He's, I thought he looked great when I, I watched it again I, today. I it really looks cool. really cool. Yeah. All right, my next choice. Uh, speaking of vampires, how about some lesbian vampires? Vampire lovers, yes. right? <laughs> hey, they're buxom, they're lesbians. This is a winner here. So <laughs> wait, before you describe it, do we do we get the infamous, as Chris says, the under boob, or do we get side boob? You get full you get, on in the bathtub. You boob. get full on boob, yeah. <laughs> get bathtub boob. <laughs> <laughs> so it was uh, 1970. I mean, you know, this is just like classic hammer of that time period. And I, I, you know, we, we were talking about it on Facebook, but I'm going to tell the story. If, if you want, if you get the, uh, the screen factory uh, Blu-ray here, they have a bunch of really cool documentaries and featurettes, but there's a, there's an interview with Madeline Smith who plays one of the lead women, uh, you know, below um, Ingrid Pitt in the film. And she talks about how, when she first got the role, uh, she was really, really thin. Okay, she was young. I think she was like 20 or 22 years old, something like that. And after she got the role and she was putting, you know, wearing the costumes and stuff and they were doing all the rehearsals and stuff, the director uh, called her aside and said, um, yeah, we're a little concerned. And she's like, why? What's the matter? Am I, am I acting? Is my acting okay? And all that kind of stuff. They're like, yeah, we just, um, we don't know if you're quite buxom enough. And she's like, okay, really? And she's like, all right, well, um, let me go and try and put on a couple of quick pounds. So she's like, so I went for like a, a couple of weeks, like two weeks, and I ate a lot of like uh, full fat yogurt. And she goes, and all the weight I put on went right to my breasts. And, be, and then next thing I went back and they were like, perfect. And, and <laughs> well, the film, it, she's certainly not flat chested in the film, right? No. <laughs> 
So I've never heard that before because she says in the, in the, in the documentary, like most women would have gone and gotten breast implants, right? If the role right. meant that much to them, but she's like, I didn't even need to do that. I just ate a lot of yogurt. I was like, I've never heard that before. Crazy. No. But anyway, but I this mean, is, uh, this is all Ingrid Pitt. I mean, Ingrid yeah. Pitt is like the reason to, to watch this film. You know, it's got, uh, Peter Cushing's name on it, but he's in like the film for like 10 minutes, a little bit, at the beginning, a little bit, at the end, but it's, it's just a great, great, um, you know, all basically all chick vampire flick uh, with the, uh, you know, the, the Karnstein legacy and, uh, and Ingrid Pitt just plays a great vampire and she looks gorgeous in the film. So uh, I, I like this a lot, a lot of fun. Oh, Peter sure. Cushing is probably the one actor that's been in the most Hammer films, I would say, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe Michael. Michael, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Dan. Maybe you know the the one guy who's always plays a bit role in all these movies. Michael, what is his name? Michael, oh no, not Michael Gogue. Um, uh, Gower. I'll think. I'll think of it. Uh, I'll, but uh, anyway, Dan, back to you. Okay. Yeah, I was actually. Yeah, I, I'm trying to. Uh, I don't want to <laughs> leave the room. I was going to get the closing note for the whole show tonight. Which should be about Ingrid Pitt. Uh, of course, why wouldn't it be? Uh, anyhow, my next choice, uh, there's a couple of things here, but I'm going to go with um, Plague of the Zombies. Why not? I'm, I like zombies. Um, but on top of it, it's just, once again, you have to realize, I believe Plague of the Zombies was like the last film made about zombies in the, quote, traditional sense of the word um, before Romero changed the whole landscape. Uh, and the thing about it's great, it's once again, it, it, it follows almost the, the, uh, the typical Haitian or the white zombie uh, storyline, you know, about in, in, of course, in, all place, in Wales, you know, uh, long before Tom Jones was born. And, you know, there's this, you know, once again, people are traveling to a town and all of a sudden there's this weird stuff going on. People are dying of a disease. And basically there's a guy who's involved with sorcery. So it captures all these different aspects of it he's and he's not haitian or anything he's he's a he's a he's a welsh guy that has practiced in the dark dark arts and um the zombies are kind of corny they're green faced and they look like haircuts like mo howard and three stooges but um it's just a fun film and once again it's got the sinister atmosphere uh, and it was one of those standalone films that came out in 66 they're going off in these standalone which i find them very intriguing did it warrant a sequel? Oh, absolutely not. But it was just fun to have this. And so I, I grabbed it for that because of its uniqueness and kind of from a creative aspect, um, Hammer Films going off track, not staying, all right, we'll make another Dracula. We're going to do it, but hey, let's do this yeah. without Peter Cushing and without Christopher Lee. And it succeeded. I mean, if anything, it succeeded in those afternoon, you know, afternoon um, matinees. But that's why I like it. It's unique. It's good. It's got zombies, you know, and there's no bucks and women, unfortunately. They're all dressed up very Victorian like. Yeah, true. true. A lot of those films are that's very, that's very, very. That's the only zombie movie that Hammer did, right? Huh? Uh, that's the only zombie movie Hammer did, right? Yeah. 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 So, so, yeah. so that's my pick. Yeah, and very much like uh, the traditional zombie films pre-Romero. So in other words, creating these soulless beings to basically be your slaves, right? As yeah. opposed to yeah, they're working in a tin mine. They're to yeah. mine tin. Yes. You know, and people are dying in the town. It's like cheap labor. He's going through all this all this witchcraft and sorcery just to what? Pay not pay people? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of weird, warped and bizarre, but I think it's no different in the real world. So okay. Uh, it's yeah. you know, but I do enjoy it. I do enjoy it as, as a standalone. Yep, good that's stuff. my pick. Cool. All right, Mr. Allo, back to you. Nice. All right, so uh, uh, a, a vampire flick that uh, didn't get mentioned, which is why, yeah, that, that list that uh, Rich was mentioning, I think was just the, uh, the Van Helsing movies, is uh, Captain Kronos, Vampire yeah. Hunter. Uh, it's really kind of a swashbuckling vampire guy, sort of predates Buffy the Vampire Slayer or Blade uh, guy, you know, roaming the countryside on a horse, hooking up with hot babes like Caroline Monroe, and then leaving wanting uh, want more. Um, a lot of people don't like this movie. I fucking love it. I don't, it's kind of cheesy. Uh, of course, they wanted it to be a franchise, and it uh, didn't quite work out, but it probably wouldn't work out anyway. I mean, Hammer was about to die uh, shortly after this, but I, I really dig it, uh, and uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. It is fun. Um, and Caroline Monroe was just 
gorgeous. I was just gonna say it's fun and it's got Carolyn Monroe and some and some vampires. Yeah. So yeah, that's it. I personally could care less for the lead character. I don't, it's like he doesn't even matter in this film. Right. Too. Yeah. I mean, he you know he he kind of almost reminds me of like like a like a like a dumb pro wrestler kind of guy. <laughs> But you know he's got a sword. He's got Caroline Monroe in you. There's some vampires, and okay, I'm sold. I'm good. I'm good. But it is fun. So there's other vampire movies that they list with that, like The Kiss of the Vampire, Vampire Circus, Vampire Lovers, yeah, Lust of the Vampire, and Twins of Evil. Yeah, yeah, they're all classics. Twins of Evil, Evil is really good. Twins of Evil, and another one where Peter Cushing's a real scumbag. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally is. <laughs> Beyond Moff Tarkin. <laughs> oh, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> All right, Rich, what do you got next? All right, going with uh, Fanatic, also known as Die, Die, My Darling. Uh-huh. 1965. And I actually watched Maniac again when, when, when I uh, watched this one. Didn't really like Maniac. I thought it was pretty boring. I got to say. Offbeat, yeah. <clears throat> Black and white, though, that was different. Was black and white, some different. But yeah, my, uh, my recollection was, what's that? Well, my recollections with Maniac were totally. It wasn't like I revisited it. I I think I saw it like thirty years ago, oh, and okay. I liked it when I first saw it. Um, and then, like I said, subsequent viewings, it's like I can't sit yeah. through because I know what's yeah, going so on, and so forth. So, uh, Die, Die, My Darling is cool. I it, I think it's very kind of like Hitchcockish, a little bit. Feels like so. It's about the um the mother who has her son's girlfriend come over. Oh, visit. yeah, I remember that. That story. But the son is dead. And throughout the story, she finds out from the girlfriend that he actually killed himself and she doesn't believe it. So throughout the story, the mother keeps the girlfriend trapped in the house and doesn't mm -hmm. let her go. So she's doing all these things to keep her in the house and She's a religious fanatic and she thinks she's doing this because the Bible tells her to do it and it's for her better good. And throughout the whole story, the girl's just doing all these different things to try and get out of the house. And this woman has the, um, the woman that works there. She's like the, you know, like I guess the cook, the house cleaner, all that kind of stuff. And there's a couple other people there that live in the house and everybody's under her control. Yeah. And she just won't let this girl get out of the house. She just does everything to try and get out and she can't. So it's, it's cool. It's a good story. Yeah, it's and a then warped it ends. little thriller. What's that? It's a warped little thriller. I, I, I dig. Yes, psychological thriller. Yeah. Yeah. It's and a, then, then it's a lot of good movies like that. Yeah. It's, it it kind of ends kind of like Psycho a little bit. Tad. The American actress Tallulah Bankhead's in that, right? Uh, older actress. She plays, right? Uh, I forgot the names. What's the name? Tallulah Bankhead. Yep. Yeah, from the 30s. Yes, that was the uh, also, yeah. Hattie Mc and one of rumored to be Hattie McDaniel's lover, you know, which uh, you know that's just sordid Hollywood history. Uh, Donald Sutherland's in this too. <coughs> Who's that? Donald Sutherland was in it too. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I enjoyed it. Very, you know, very different for Hammer. That's why I wanted to put it in my ten. You know, different from the outside of the gothic, you know, monsters and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of good ones to choose from. Yeah. My next choice has already been mentioned, but uh, The Mummy from 1959. So right up there. Again, I, I agree with everything Chris said. I think uh, I think Christopher Lee is masterful in this role, even though he's just kind of ambles about and runs about and smashes things. But it's kind of cool, you know, when you're used to the universal mummies, you know, which is all the, you know, ambling yeah. about or, uh, you know, Boris Karloff, who appears in the bandages for like three seconds, right? It's kind of cool to see a really ravenous, you know, psycho mummy running around, killing and smashing things. So uh, I like it. And I, I, his eyes are really intense, right? Like yeah. remember the show close up of the eyes, it's like bugging yeah. out of his head. So uh, yeah, I wish he would have done another, but you know, we know that Lee hated doing Curse of Frankenstein. He hated doing the mummy. He didn't like any role where he had to wear a lot of makeup and didn't have any lines, right? So that's, uh, that, that was his big issue with the, with the early Hammer stuff. But I like it. I think it's classic. I, I dig it. Back to you, Dan. I remember... Uh... I remember when we talked about it on the previous episode and I was saying when I watched it again, it's like very classy too, like the lavish costumes and everything. It, yeah, it's very well it made. looks like it's got a it looks like it's got a huge budget. Yeah, but none none of these films did. But they they, okay. they took whatever they could get and they mm -hmm. made the films look really nice. And that's the important. Yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. They were 
uh, what do you call it, it was basically tight wads. I mean, they ran, they were, they were bigger budget than Roger Corman and American International Pictures, but um, they really ran a tight ship. Um, and, but the thing is their films look so, far more lavish, maybe because they protected their elements, you know, they, the negatives and things like this, they, they stayed in storage properly. But the, to this day, and you see some of the Blu-rays and the way they're done, um, they stand up, they're just so lavishly filmed. There's great color, great cinematography, the and, you know, and the costuming, everything, you know. And, when, you, uh, uh, when you watch Maniac and Die, Die, My Darling, you can see the nice contrast between the two types of movies too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because one's color, one's black and white, and the way they restored them. Nice, nice contrast. Yep. Yep. All right, Dan, what's your next picture? Me, huh? Okay, look, I show another toy here. Look at this. Uh, God. Kiss of the Vampire. Oh, there we go. Yep. <laughs> yeah, this is this is one of the Blu-rays I picked up on that haul I told you about. Somebody on eBay was selling like a bunch of, they were selling lots of hammer Blu-rays. And I ended up getting like that and plus Amicus or the House that Drip Blood and some of those are anthologies. Yeah, I was able to get like 10 or 12 films for like $90 on Blu-ray. Yeah, and so I was like, that's it. Great way because Peter, you know, Peter says, oh, I'm upgrading to Blu-ray or 4K. And meanwhile, I get sucked into the cult. And next thing I was like, oh, God, here we go. You know, if I'm not buying UFO Strangers of the Night, it's going to be some kind of a 4K box set with 16 okay. discs. You know, then there, you know, then I'm trying to explain to my wife why I can't pay my life insurance premium. Um, but anyhow, nonetheless, Kiss of the Vampire. Um, another, you know, it was I think it was the third script for Lee. They wanted to offer to Lee. Uh, uh, even Peter Cushing turned turned it down because there's an occult element in it. And once again, a couple, they go. And then there's this cult of vampire worshipers and they are taken out by like some bizarre sorcery scheme in the end or like some curse. And um, it's just wild. The whole, you know, the whole aspect of, um, what do you call it? The, just a different approach with vampires. Uh, it was almost like, like premonitions like Charles Manson or a number of cults in the 60s or 70s where they're just worshiping you know, the vampire guy, but who's the head of the cult. Um, but the interesting thing about it is that it, um, how would I say it? Uh, it had two cuts on it. The American cut, they took all the violence out and they replaced a secondary storyline in it, which is not good at all. Uh, and Peter Cushing had turned the film down because uh, there was sorcery elements in it. He didn't want to play Van Helsing because there was a lot of black magic and he felt that was not uh, Van Helsing's specialty. Uh, which I think, which is kind of funny is that I think when you watch the 1991 Dracula by Francis Ford Coppola, I believe that Anthony Hopkins Van Helsing is steeped in dark arts or he studied them. But it's an interesting contrast, um, a lot of fun. They release Bats from Hell, they go away. And I just think it's a kind of unique off. That was their first approach other than the Brides of Dracula to go into this, creating their own vampire mythos. Yeah. And uh, it's a little weird, it's hard to follow, but on this Blu-ray that I have, they have both the American version and uh, Kiss of the Vampire, the British version, as well as other supplemental material. So it's worth the price of admission. There you go, like Kiss it. of the Vampire. It's a strong one. All right, Chris, back to you. All right, uh, so my, uh, I guess this is number six for me. Yep. Uh, Pete previously mentioned it, The Vampire Lovers. Uh, unbelievable flick. Uh, lots of awesome, great girl-on-girl -girl vampire action. I know uh, back in 2017, I did a show at the Alamo Draft House with my, uh, my, my Hudson Horror show. Where we would, I would pick, you know, I would look for 35 millimeter film prints and, and run them and Typically, we stuck to the 70s and 80s and the 90s, um, and we did, uh, we did a, a triple feature. It was Candyman, uh, Vampire Lovers, and Without Warning, and I was really concerned with how Vampire Lovers would play with our audience because it was, you know, the, I think it's the oldest, it could be the oldest movie we ever ran, and I just was kind of wondering how our audience, which was so into the 80s films would react to this but I was nervous but pleasantly surprised because 
even, a, you know, a couple of years ago when we ran it and it went over unbelievably, the audience still, still loved it. So uh, it, it's a great flick. It's still, it still totally holds up and uh, it, it's just a lot of fun. Yep. Totally agree. All right, Rich, back to you. All right. The, uh, the quarter mass experiment, also known as the creeping unknown in America, yeah. the United States. So black and white movie. So I wanted to pick another thing that was a little bit different. Like I did uh, Die, Die, My Darling. So this is um, one that involves a little space travel. And when uh, the one surviving person from the craft comes back to the planet, he brings something back with him and it starts changing his body throughout the whole movie and his hand gets really disfigured and then his face is changing and then he turns into this, I don't know, globulous kind of octopus looking thing by the end of the movie that's supposed to, you know, supposedly threatens mankind if they don't destroy it. So yeah, it's another different entry that I enjoy in all these horror, you know, these Hammer horror movies. I am not mistaken, that was their first foray into sci-fi horror that was yeah. I think that was the one that's clear right yeah. yeah probably yeah yeah and it is yeah. pretty good too the sequels are good yeah like i have I, to watch I, them again it's been a while i just watched five million years to earth last night which i forget what the british title is but um it was really it was really pretty good they all are good yeah i like i like a you know different type of movie like this amongst all these other type of you know more even gothic horror and you know everything else that they do yeah, it's a good choice. Cool. All right, my next pick. Uh, a couple of folks have already picked it, but I'm going to go with the Gorgon. I like the Gorgon quite, uh, despite the kind of bad special effects. But um, it's a good one. I, I like the whole Gorgon Medusa thing anyway, and I love uh, you know. Again, I thought the reveal of who actually was the the creature was was pretty well done and. Uh, Good film, very underrated film. A lot of people when they talk about Hammer, they don't mention the Gorgon, but I've I've always dug it quite a bit. So that's my uh, that's my number six. And you know, probably why though the Ray Harryhausen one, and Clash of the Titans, always comes out on top. I mean, that's pretty that's pretty amazing. It still looks yeah. it still looks incredible. That's one of Harryhausen's greatest creations, in my opinion. Yes. Yeah. 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 This looks really cheap and cheesy by comparison, but. Yeah. Uh, you know, for Hammer, I mean, I just, I, I think the story is great. The acting is really good. It's a definitely mm -hmm. a suspenseful, creepy film, you know. But yeah, they need to put a little bit more money behind that, right? It's just... Yeah. <laughs> well, thank right. God they didn't have to pay Christopher Lee, so it's good. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Not enough. Um, am I up? I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm sorry. Okay. Um, well, you know, I'm going to go, I think I mentioned the comments about it before, but the devil rides out. And I kind of mentioned comments when I interjected. Um, I was doing that so I didn't have to talk about it because, you know, it kind of moves things along. So when you have four people here trying to fit into a certain amount of time. Uh, but yeah, Devil Rides Out, once again, um, holds up very well as opposed to many, uh, see, satanic films of the era. I mean, there are very few that hold up. The only other ones I could think that hold up as well as that is Curse of the Demon with uh, Dana Andrews from Columbia Pictures, which is also a British film. Yeah. Um, and oddly enough, the, a Val Luton film from the 70s, from the 40s called The Seventh Victim. If any of you guys have seen that, um, no, that but no. it's wild. It's about us in 1943 and actually like kind of like a Rosemary's Baby satanic cult in New York City. And there's a really creepy film uh, filming of it. But anyhow, The Devil Rides Out. I mean, we've got Christopher Lee, who's actually the hero. Uh, after playing Dracula and so forth. Uh, there's no scumbag Peter Cushing in it. You've got Charles Gray, who went off to play Eric Blowfield. Uh, it's a film that holds up. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't try to pull any punches. They didn't try to be uh, satirical or tongue in cheek. It's a straightforward horror film. And we had discussed earlier, like Dennis Wheatley and, and all of the work that he had done. So that's it uh, with that one. The Devil Rides. Well, Satan's Claw is another really good kind of satanic occult yes. film from the same period, which I like quite a bit also. Another good one. All right, Chris, what do you got? Uh, all right, my next pick. Uh, speaking of which, uh, The Devil Rides Out, I was just going to throw in that, uh, you know, I'm a big Danzig fan. Uh, Danzig owns the mask, or at least he, he had owned the mask from the, the Devil Rides Out. He, he used it uh, in the late 80s 
in uh, some Danzig videos and posters and stuff. So um, I guess through his the uh, go to Mendy's mask. Yeah, yeah, he's got wow. the mask. It's, it's pretty. It looked. Yeah, it's um. Shit, I'm trying to think which which video it is. It's in one of the early Danzig videos, and I even have the a, a poster that I bought from I guess Danzig one, which was 1988, where he's up on the the a crucifix and he's got the uh, the go to Amendi's mask. It's it's pretty crazy, but that's a that's a side thing. But um, all right, my my next pick, uh, which I I need to definitely need to upgrade because DVDs are shit. And I need the Blu-ray until I have buy it a third time on 4K. And that's the Satanic Rites of Dracula. Uh, it's the last Dracula movie. And uh, it's almost like James Bond where there's this whole plot with nuclear bomb and everything. But a lot of people shit on it. I love it. Uh, I, I hate that they retitle it in America as Count Dracula and, and his vampire bride. Such a stupid title. Um, but it's, it's a great little movie. You know, I like that they were trying something different with the whole satanic aspect, uh, which, uh, Hammer tried to do, uh, on my one dishonorable mention. Uh, but yeah, I, I dig it. it it's cool. And it's very, very, uh, it's kind of different. It's the same, but different, you know, Van Helsing and Dracula, but there's a nuclear bomb and Satan. And, you know, it's like fucking throw a kitchen sink in there. I mean, just get everything in there. I was going to say, what's the whole satanic angle? I haven't watched that one in a long time. Yeah, there's all this black magic mumbo jumbo and uh, plot to, you know, blow up the world and whatever else, man. It, it's it's fun. It's schlocky. Uh, you know, Peter Cushing plays the grandson or great grandson of the original because they they jumped into the into this modern times with was it Dracula Dracula AD 1972. Yeah. Uh, and I know a lot of people were like, oh, that's when the Dracula movies really jumped the shark. But it, it 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 never bothered me. I I, I like them all. They're, they're all fun. Yeah, they're all fun. I've never I've never seen that one. Oh, really? I don't know why? Because I've never seen it. Because I have it. You know, of course, you know, find the time to do it. Because it was under that. It was. It, it's actually like public domain in some weird things. At least it, it is. A, yes. Somehow, I, and I don't know how that happens. Yeah. And right. uh, then then of course there's the Satanic Rites of Dracula. And the, I think the Bride of Dracula and the Satanic Rites. That's like heavily cut. Like. 10 or 15 minutes out of it. Yes. Yeah, and, and, and... Um, so I finally got it. I think it was available on Anchor at one point. Like it was a two disc set. It came with something else. Is that, did it come with that on yours? It could. I mean, this one is, this one is the old, this old DVD is Anchor Bay, but it's just, uh, it's just Dracula. And, uh, ah, okay. But it, 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 it probably, it probably did come out as a, I've, I've never yeah. seen it. I think what it was, I got turned off by Dracula AD 72, which they were trying to be kind of topical at the time and everybody's you know dressed up like uh, the monkeys and, and oh, it's, it's got that, that it's got that rock band like Stoneheart or something yeah and it's just it's like so, it's so, so I'm cheesy. having a hard time taking everybody seriously in right that, you know and I, and I can imagine that I can only imagine the uh I would love to be a fly on the wall in the trailer as uh Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing sat in their trailer and said god what kind of shit we get ourselves into with this one right you know <laughs> You know, we could be doing other great stuff, but anyhow, that's I just want to yeah. I want to throw that in. I've never seen it now. It's, it's, it. it's fun, it's really good, but yeah, make sure you watch the uncut one, right? Uh, because yeah, the, the cut one is is missing, you know, all the good I, stuff. I tracked all the anchor bays down because you know, after Bill Lustig left uh, Anchor, and you know, he was the one that it really uh, Bill Lustig was pivotal in getting all these films into the oh, states, sure. at least Anchor Bay. and. You know, I don't know what happened along the line, and he went off to flu. What he he created uh, blue uh, blue underground, yeah, yeah, and blue underground, and uh, this was the only way to see some of these films. And I actually spent. I have to I hate to admit this, uh, but I ended up getting them on the secondary market. A lot of them. I mean, some were cheap, like you know, certain ones, but certain ones like the the Static Rights of Dracula, particularly the two DVD set was like very pricey and I kind of lucked out with it, but they, they, they went up in value at one point. Maybe I'll just, you know, sit down and finally break down and watch it. Sure. Yeah. Is that one of the sets you guys are talking about? Uh, it's, it's not on that set. I don't believe, is it? No, it was on, no, it was on anchor Bay set. It was like anchor. The Bay one Bay I had was an anchor, although Rich, I had a whole bunch of those. In fact, I might. I had, have I had that originally. I had that that box that that box of rich hats. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I had all. Yeah, I've I've got like fifteen copies of different things from you know Warner this the box this and they're all in binders. We're preaching to the very, choir. Yeah, we we went through this about physical media. Yeah. It's very confusing and very convoluted. Uh, you know what? Mar what version of Martin am I going to watch today? You oh, know? sure. <laughs> 
I mean, the worst well, thing, and this is told another subject, but you, you can appreciate this, Dan, buying, uh, you know, I used to spend tons of money buying bootleg VHS tapes at like Chiller Theater because, uh, you know, oh, yeah. back back in the 80s and, and early 90s, only that's all you it. had. Oh, God. You know? That's it. If you wanted oh, to yeah. watch the uncut version of Satanic Rites of Dracula, you mm-hmm. had to buy a bootleg VHS tape VHS. for yeah, t- 20 from, bucks. Yeah, take, taken from taken from a PAL uh, VHS that was transferred, and there was always something warped about it because it never came through properly. Totally. You know, now how how far we've come. Yeah. <laughs> now no, we can just true. Go and, yeah. We're, we're, we're all film snobs now. Oh, that, oh, yeah. You know, and it's so funny. Years ago, like I said, I grew up at a time. Not to change the subject, I grew up at a time we had a. Uh, antenna on top of the tv like the the honeymooners one like you know captain video go ahead ralph stand in the hallway with this to get the reception things would roll and this and that and then all of a sudden something like amc comes along or some other channel that shows something and still i had friends of mine that would say like you know don't you hate when they put that logo in the bottom right corner (laughs) it's like it's like please i remember when now now we we become snobs totally 100 percent the only thing yeah. that's holding me back is like kind of like the budget. You know, do I need to right. buy more? Uh, but other than that, no, it's uh, I'm trying to find it. And of course, Peter says he bought a 75 inch TV. And, and I think Peter, <laughs> Peter's actually the guy from The Devil Rides Out because uh, Peter buys a 75 inch TV and he goes, You know, even my DVDs don't look right on this. I'm going like, Great. So if I go up to 55 inches, things are going to look all fucked up. Gee, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Let me invest. Some As the more guy money. who sent me a text two days ago about the Arrow streaming service, oh. special, right? Oh, uh, yes, but I told you we'll talk about that offline. While I was so excited about it. <laughs> anyway, Rich, back to you. All right, I'll follow up Chris's Dracula with the other Dracula, Prince of Darkness. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. But this uh, two movie set, these aren't as good. When I watch this again, this is when it's like the smaller box inside the screen when you're watching it not good Terrible. right yeah because it's it's not widescreen cool. enhanced these are good these are all widescreen this fills your tv yeah. screen mm-hmm. but no I, I definitely need to upgrade this when i watch that one again but rich like, do you remember when those came out though those hammer collections how excited yeah. they all were because they were yeah. two on ones i i thought those were the greatest oh. things ever but then when i started watching yeah. some of these on blu-ray i'm like oh those anchor bays are shit right Terrible. Well, you gotta remember yeah. nobody had widescreen tvs back then so Couldn't it was get fine it. Especially yeah. when you have the these ones that are printed like this, you don't even have the artwork on it. It's just oh, yeah. plain bits oh, on both two, sides. And they're two, they're two sided. Yeah, that's yeah, not cool, not cool. But still, a great Dracula movie. This is the third one, right? Yeah, this is the third entry in the series. And uh, what do I? I really liked um, how he's brought back in this one, like you said earlier, Dan, with the coffin and the mm-hmm. blood dripping in there, and that's how he comes back to life. Yeah, very cool. Yep. But yeah, just don't get this edition if you're looking for the movie because that's not good. That's the one I bought for a lot of money at one point because yeah, two just it's set. the boat. Yeah. Yeah. Funny, not, not I've been selling all of mine. People pay good money for those. That I know. Is, if, well, once I can get it on Blu-ray or, or 4K, I'm gonna. There's sell a lot that. of people who have not upgraded to Blu-ray players and they're still right. buying DVDs. So the collectors. Or their collectors, they just like to have it in that right. format. Right. You know, st- statistically, not to get into all technical aspects, you know, DVD technically still outsells Blu-ray. I mean, Blu-ray has not become the, the, the power. People didn't want to upgrade. And there's still a lot of DVD sales. That's why a lot of companies are offering you the DVD and the Blu-ray. Yeah. Or they're in yeah. streaming. And they have, here's the UV card or whatever the hell it's called. You download it and watch it on your phone. Like, yeah, yeah nothing better than watching a widescreen film on a six-inch screen. Yeah, I, that's, I don't that's see like, that. Yeah, yeah, that's like watching a film called The Attack of the 50-Foot Midget. It makes no sense. It's an yeah. oxymoron, you know? <laughs> so, you know, too, some movies, they just look better on DVD because if it's too sharp, it's too much resolution, it shows the imperfections. Yeah. So sometimes it's good to have, you know, maybe an older film or something that's not, you know, with a, a higher budget or well-processed enough, mm-hmm. you know, and you could watch it in a regular DVD format and it still looks good. You know, they have, they have, well, you know, it's funny, it's not to change subject, but they have, I have friends of mine that are like critics on certain films, mostly classic films from the 40s and stuff. And they recently came out with some Laurel and Hardy stuff. And they're all oh, restoration. We're going to do this and that. And they call it digital scrubbing. 
on older yep. films. And sometimes digital scrubbing, that the biggest complaint about this Laurel and Hardy thing uh, is that, and they become gun shy, is that it is so scrubbed, so clean. Everybody comes out looking like they're a puppet on yep. Supercar. Uh, it's the best way to describe it. There's nothing, it's just too clean. It looks, people look flat. Yeah. And um, so that's why I think, um, you know, there's a lot of, you know, we'll call video snobs or people that are actually reviewing stuff. They, they really go after this stuff and say, you know, you're doing it over the top. And as Peter had said at one point, not in a bad sense, when you watch Curse of Frankenstein, it's like, wow, that's where the makeup ends and his real skin begins. Yeah, you see the little see the imperfections in here. And, yep. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. as a matter of fact, uh, not uh, worked with the Universal show we did, uh, we talked about uh, there was a film called Horror Island, which was always around as a 16 millimeter, very dark, murky print. When they when they tran when they transferred it to just to Blu-ray without scrubbing it, you could see a you could see a backstage hand moving something under the stage or under the set. That's how involved it was. So sometimes Blu-ray is your worst enemy. You can see everything now, right? Yeah. 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 All right. My number five. Uh, again, we've talked about it a bit. Dracula, Prince of Darkness. Uh, dig it. You know, I, man, Christopher Lee's Dracula can't go wrong. This is a uh, also a uh, Scream Factory. Really nice job on this. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it because we all love it. And that's my number five. Back to Dan for number four. Back to me. Well, I'm going to go with, what did I miss here? Let's see. Something we've already done so we can move this along. Oh, Captain Kronos, Vampire Hunter. Um, once again, Chris kind of summed it up. And I'll just reiterate, Carolyn Monroe. Uh, but he summed it up. And it is kind of fun because it brought kind of a swashbuckling element to the film. And it was just kind of a little tongue-in-cheek. And as Chris said, it's very true. It, was, it did very well in the box office. And they were hoping to have it reinvigorate. Um, the treasures of the or, or hammer films but at that point just wasn't working um and that was it so like it fun tongue-in-cheek i think you and i had a conversation with it many moons ago about captain Chronos vampire hunter a very short conversation how we both liked it so that's one of my picks it's a good one yeah it's a fun one all right chris what do you got all right i think i think uh this one's already mentioned uh, the first sequel to Horror of Dracula, uh, Brides of Dracula. It's uh, a lot of fun, uh, a lot of action. Uh, Peter Cushing is unbelievable in it. He does a lot of jumping around and fighting. Uh, really, the, the only negative is that they couldn't get Christopher Lee back. Uh, but even without Christopher Lee, it's it's really a, a, a fun, action-packed, uh, fast-paced movie. And this, yeah, yeah the guy they got to play the, the vampire is really good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a it's a fun movie. Cool. All right, Rich. Number four. All right. I'm going to go to 19, I think it's 1970, and Dinosaurs, because I'm a big fan of dinosaurs and monsters, yeah. giant monsters. Nice. So when dinosaurs ruled the earth. Yeah. Love this one. Got Victoria. <laughs> so uh, what's in this one? This is the, what's, what's in this one? You got the uh, plesiosaur. You know, the water monster that comes onto the water dinosaur that comes onto the land. Yep. And you got the Taurosaurus, not your traditional Triceratops. You got Taurosaurus in there. Good special effects, too. You know, being a, a kid and loving dinosaurs growing up, and then you're seeing this. and You got a pretty girl in there as well. And dinosaurs that look realistic, I was I was sold. But then still holds up to this day when I watch it. Even the little baby dinosaur. Yeah, he's cute. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. It's like, I mean, it's basically like the sequel to One Million Years B.C., um, except they yeah. put Harry House and they got the next best thing. I forget what his name is, but he does a really good job in it. Was, uh, let's see. But it looks great. Yeah, the special effects are great. Creature yeah, effects are Raquel awesome. Welch. <laughs> What's that? You don't have Raquel Welch, though. It's, uh, you don't, but the girl in this is pretty, too. Oh, yeah. She okay. is. Oh, I didn't know. I did, I did not expect them to get any, you know, any second rates. No, no, no. It's... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, they were always they were always they 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 knew how to cast their women for all of us young i got like, oh yeah but yeah this was cool yeah i'm a, I'm a fan of that I, I dig it yeah i don't know i love dinosaur films you know stop motion dinosaurs sign me up sign me and up when we were young like we didn't see anything that looked that good true. 1970 yeah. right true true 
All right, my number four, we have talked about quite a bit today, but I love it. Uh, the Devil Rides Out. There's, uh, there's the devil to go to Mendy's there, of course, with the damsel in distress. Uh, Christopher Lee, awesome in this film. I, I love it. I think it's creepy. It's, it's, it's got that occult feel you'd like. And yeah, they weren't really doing films like this back then. And, uh, you know, it's kind of tame by today's standards, but uh, I still think it holds up really, really well. And uh, I, I wish they did more of this type of thing, but uh, that's my number four. Pretty high. I like it a lot. Okay. All right, Dan, back to you. Number three. Yeah, I'm just looking at my list here because I'm crossing things out and I really can't even read my cross outs on what I've crossed out or not. Um, oh, I'm sorry, wait, hold on a second, Dan. The special effects was uh, Jim Danforth. I know that name. Okay. Yep, yep. Stop motion creature effects, Jim Danforth. Yeah, very well done. My next favorite film is The Lost Continent. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> that is a film I never saw in the theaters. And now I understand why at Suncoast Video, that Viking Queen and the Vengeance of She was found in the cutout bin for $3.99. Oh, I got them all oh. from Suncoast. I have all the, the Lost cutout Continent version. is definitely the best of those three. Absolutely. So was, not the Lost Continent. I was I was being I was being uh being satirical about that because I watched it, I go, what the fuck is going on here? True to form though, they did uh, they did hire a very buxom woman. And she's wearing like little like pontoon shoes as they walk across the swamp. But that's not my choice. I just wanted to, I had to share that in the Hammer evening. People would appreciate it. Some of I the actually, first rubber monsters ever. In ever. That. Oh. I was, if I had more time, because I found the Lost Continent DVD in my collection, it's like, oh, fuck, I would love to rewatch it. Because I haven't, haven't seen it in years. Oh, I've tried. It's, it's the type of thing you have to watch at three in the morning when you're drunk and you have like mm -hmm. Burger King sitting in your lap or something <laughs> crazy like that. You know, but it's, it's so, so weird. It's out there. I, have, I bought it on Blu-ray. It's like, I just had to have it. because it's. Uh, uh, of course, you're upgrading it because you have a 75-inch TV. Of course. <laughs> Everything's going to be Blu-ray, 4K. Pretty soon you'll have Christopher Lee appearing in your living room. Uh, hey, I would love that. Anyhow, <laughs> nonetheless, my choice was not was not Lost Continent. That was uh, actually tongue-in-cheek and satirical. Uh, my choice is um, where you go? The Reptile. Um. The reptile only once again. Here we go. Got another somebody. one off. Another really good one off. Yeah, yeah uh, we we've got the, the the crazy doctor, you know, hiding his daughter, and people are like, you know, dying from a disease. And once again, there's like some unwary. I, I really believe the '80s slasher films were, you know, they were basically inspired with like the stupid teenagers that hang hang under the you know, hide under the chainsaws in the in the barn, uh, were based on these Victorian dimwits in these uh, in these you know uh, Hammer films. So they go out there, they're going to live. They they require an uncle's cottage, and there's murders going on in the town. I was like, oh, we're bored, you know, and my wife's too stuck up, so we're going to investigate why. And the great thing about it, there's some great sequences with the reptile. Uh, who was the doctor's daughter. Uh, the first time I saw her, and I saw it like in the 60s in the theaters. Um, the first time you see her face come out of the shadows, it's like, whoa, you know, when you're like 10 or 11, it's like bedwetting time. Yeah. Um, and uh, just the whole thing to the end. And, you know, it's just a nice, one, it's just a nice solid runner off, one off uh, that once again, tackled a different situation, actually a very unique situation. Nobody had ever done a film about like the lizard daughter you know, other than the alligator people, which is pretty lame by comparison. Oh, I love the alligator people. Oh, I know. No, I'm not. No, I'm not just. <laughs> I'm not disrespecting the alligator people. I love it. Beverly and, Garland and Lon Chaney and the yeah, fucking so you got Lon Chaney. I just want that alligator mask. That thing is awesome. <laughs> I see you, alligator people. That's a, and that's Lon Chaney, and you know, probably drunk on screen, but it's oh, all good. gotta be. No doubt. <laughs> That was my choice there, the reptile. Uh, one off, 1966 as well, I was playing the zombies. I mean, just at this high point of when they were pumping this stuff out. If and I'm not mistaken, there was a slow decline. I think they shot Plague of the Zombies and the reptile on the same sets, one right after the other. They like, look pretty yeah, close. I think you're right. And, I, and if I'm not, if I'm also not mistaken, there's plenty of actors who were in both films. Um, oh yeah no that was like kind of like we have a two-week production schedule let's go you know yeah. you wear the same costumes we're just gonna you know uh, yeah, i love the reptile the that, the reptile is probably just outside my number 10 my, my just and, outside my top 10 my and that was one of those ones along with the funny thing when they when anchor bay was putting out these these sets 
um, the reptile, best of my recollection, the same ones I have, reptile and um, play of the zombies, the actual DVD transfers were actually quite good. They actually pretty much stayed in track with that. Um, so that's my choice. Cool. On to the next. All right, Chris, what do you got? Uh, I think this one was mentioned. Uh, this is uh, a, another Hammer movie that a lot, a lot of people shit on, but I fucking love it. Um, <laughs> and we ran it at Hudson Horror, and people went, as as I hoped, uh, people went batshit crazy for it. Uh, Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires. That's uh, my next one. <laughs> the 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 uh, you know we showed the U.S. print, which is the <laughs> Seven Brothers Meet Dracula, uh, which is even sh you know shorter than this, which actually works out great. Because when you're programming a, uh, a movie marathon of five or six complete films with trailers and breaks in between, it's like a, you know, I mean, Dan, uh, Dan was been to a bunch of them. You know, it's like, I don't even know uh, what we would do. I don't know, like 14, 16 hours a day of watching oh, wow, shit. Yeah. You know, if you have a movie that's like 70 minutes, that's like perfect that's amount of time. That's golden time. Yeah, That's golden. So yeah, this, this Blu-ray has both versions and some other cool extras. I mean, I love uh, 70s uh, kung fu flicks. So this is the ultimate. Uh, I'm, gonna, you know, I'm gonna piggyback you with that because I pulled this out because it reminds me of this. Oh, uh, totally. I was gonna oh, say, yeah, yeah this is- It shows you know, great 70s kung fu movies. That's, that's it. what it is with, with the vampires yeah. bite you in the neck, it's awesome. Yeah, and black magic, I mean, it's it's got it all. It's great. So uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. And you know it's great too. Film, I was like, "What is going on?" Like here? these, you know the weapons that they have. Yep. Yeah. You know they have that in that movie too. All the big swords and everything. Well, like, well, I, right? Yeah, because I this was a, a co-production with uh, Shaw Brothers and and Hammer Films. Look at that. It's like this. Nice. There you go. I can't you know, even get grab, You know, they Hammer Hammer jumped on to Shaw Brothers when Shaw Brothers was still you know still yeah. peaking at that point. So they went with a successful concept, and let's and we got Peter Cushing and whoever right. the guy played Dracula. But Peter Cushing is in there, so you're kind of you know it, it sounds like the lay. They're great. I love them both, and I have both copies or both versions. I mean, this is what you're going for in that movie. Oh yeah, that's they're fighting with, yeah. right? That's, yep. That looks pretty dangerous, there, Rich. Oh, it's serious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's serious. Serious. <laughs> this is not this is no resin prop. Sir. I, actually, I actually got it from one of the golden vampires a long time ago. Nice. <laughs> I have Chase Mailman off my lawn with this. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was my next one. So, I'm just picking back on Chris there. Nice. Golden, the seven uh, golden vampires. Very cool. Yeah, I love the sound effects too in that. A lot yeah. of blood, a lot of action. Oh, you know? yeah. You had a couple boobs. I mean, it's, it's a blast. Yeah, it really is. Nothing better than a boob blast. Okay. And you got the golden uh, the, the golden bats too that are necklaces, right? Yeah, I mean it's it's a fun it's a fun. Well, the flick. guys with the masks, right? Well, no, yes. Yeah. 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 yeah right. Yeah. Uh, yes. Trick or Treat Studios is now making the 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 golden vampire uh, masks. This there year. we go. More 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 retirement. More stuff to collect. Spends. Like a walk never ends. backyard. Never. never. If I just have <laughs> one more house, I could fit it all in. Just one more. <laughs> right. <laughs> You have to show up in a museum from Keeler. Be like, yeah. Chris Allo, I got your masks in. <laughs> Spe spe speaking of which, Chris, have you ever seen like the inside of like what's it, Guillermo del Toro's house? Oh, sure. Where he has like the where he has like the full standing H.P. Lovecraft reading a book, and he it's, has uh, it's unbelievable. Oh, God, that's like yeah, that's like one of these. That's you know, how do you entertain in that house? You can't. You just have to walk. It's, it's yeah. like uh, you know, I watched that documentary not that long ago with Tom Savini. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, holy shit, same same sort of thing, you know. I I, I knew he was a uh, you know a, a master at special effects, but I didn't realize he was so much of a collector. Yeah, oh yeah, well, I thought was really cool. And but yeah, it's like, oh my god, this puts me to shame. I think. You know whose oh, collection yeah. I'd love to see? Kirk Hammett's. This is probably really oh, extensive. I, I have his book. It's it's he unbelievable. Put a book, right, he put a book out. Yeah. 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 God, yeah. But you know, the only hey, hey, when you make big money like I that, was, you can do these things. I was just going to yeah. say. I mean, the only reason you know Kirk Hammett has that, you know, is because he's got Metallica money. So yeah, you know, more <laughs> power to him for sure. Oh, yeah, if, I I have Metall if I have Metallica money, I I remember going to Forrest Ackerman's auction in 1989. Oh wow, down in New York City, and um, 
just to give you an insight of how things, it didn't work well for you well as all, but I have my uh, catalog when I went to the auction and I was writing prices of things oh, wow. as they went. Uh, three sheet invasion of the saucer men, try $110. Oh my God. I know that's even $110 is an oh my God price, even in 1986 dollars or 87 dollars right but anyhow yeah if i had the money if i had the money like kirk hammett oh of course i'd have colin i'd have colin clive dug up and sitting in my living room right yeah uh, <laughs> you know but i think but i think i don't Clark, have these money so enough. i have to sit there and you know buy bootleg versions of uh reanimator <laughs> three uh <laughs> does it kirk though um he has a cutoff point though doesn't he stick to like 50s and 60s and 70s maybe I don't think he really gets into like the eighties and beyond. No, right? he gets classic. I, I think he stays. Yeah, 30, he's 40s, like 50s. he's hardcore into the classics. Yeah, stuff. I mean you're talking like thirties, forties, fifties. I think. Yeah. yeah, he's yeah he's bought he's bought he has bought some record setting pieces. Oh yeah, in yeah. his money, you're talking stuff that you know only yeah. you hear about. Um, yeah, so he he's got money to spend. Oh, must be nice, right? Hey, yeah. can't take uh, it with you. You got to put it somewhere, well, right? So that's yeah. right. Here you go. Well, Star Rock, maybe it'll work. I'm sure he's not uh, hurt for space. So. No. No, no, no. All right, Mike, number uh, three is Curse of Frankenstein. We've talked quite a bit about it. I love it. Hey. Um, it's the one that started it all. It's still great. It still has an impact. And the uh, best villain of all time, perhaps. Yeah. Film, right? So, Dan, back to you. Okay, well, I'm going to bring in Vampire Circus, only out of the sheer weirdness of it. Yes, um, a great weird one. Early 70s, I mean, uh, preface where kind of like they're, you know, they're burning down the windmill or killing people and 15 years later, and there's this circus traveling around. There's a lot of people dying and it's just, uh, once again, taking, you know, it, it's kind of like when you think about it, uh, vampires, you know, always had this certain, like where Romero re-envisioned the zombie, uh, vampire circus kind of throws the vampire thing into a whole different thing. Now they're a traveling troupe in the circus. And they're going from town to town. And, and you know, it, it, it kind of reminds you, it was like when, when Stephen King uh, wrote about Salem's Lot, but would it be if the vampires invaded? It's the same thing. I, I, I wonder if in some respects that uh, Stephen King had seen Vampire Circus and was slightly inspired about a, a different approach, did. you know, and, um, but it's, it, it's just a favorite because it's once again, an offshoot, a one piece or one shot deal uh, dealing with the mythos they recreated and kind of putting their special touches on it. And that's why I like that film. And that film has one of the most evil midgets ever. Yep. Yes. <laughs> and that's weird, bald, sexy, creepy looking vampire tiger lady looking fucking thing, whatever that is. <laughs> vampire tiger looking thing. And the guy, the guy who plays the head vampire in that film, who's uh, obviously locked away in the old castle, he's really good too. Yeah. Totally evil, that guy. Yeah, that's, that's a, a good, fun. It's like a good a little weird one. Yeah. Yeah, I like that one a lot. So, all right, Chris, back to you, number two. Oh, all right, my number two. Pete mentioned it earlier. Uh, this is the DVD, uh, uh, the young cut one. I need to upgrade and get the Blu-ray. Uh, Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell. Uh, Pete covered everything perfectly, except the fact that holy shit, Peter Cushing wears the worst toupee in the history of movies in this movie, <laughs> which makes no sense. Because he's got his normal hair in all the other movies. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, Dr. Frankenstein, he looks like uh, he's got the fucking 50s pompadour all of a sudden. It's like, wait, <laughs> what? But I love it because it looks so bad. And it's, this is such, this movie's such a hoot. Uh, yeah. and, and violent and, and gory. And um, the, I think at least on the, um, the Draculas and the Frankensteins, uh, bo the both Hammer movies, they went out with a bang. Is that, is that a Steve Grogan boot? Yes, it is. Yeah. There you go. I, I know his artwork. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's definitely from him. All right. Rich, what do you got? All right, we got two more, right? Yep. For, correct? Please, All please. right, I'm going to throw in one more Dracula movie. I think, it, like I said, it goes back to my childhood and Castle Dracula down in Wildwood and going inside of it because it, like, it was like literally going into one of the movies. Yeah. So I really like this one. That's a good one, yeah. And this probably has my favorite demise of him is his death when he gets impaled on the cross. And this story is cool too, but it's different because he's going kind of head to head with the church too, priest, in this one. And you don't see that that often. So, yeah. 
That's kind of one of the forgotten ones. They, that the one get like gets talked about the least, I think, out of all of them. And that's a very solid film. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. They love the castle too. Again, the castle's great. The location's great. Big giant door and everything. Yep. And when he goes yep. over the edge, his his ending is awesome. You've got to see it just for the ending. Oh yeah. <laughs> Interview and the priest is, uh, you know, the priest is reciting stuff from the Bible while all this is happening. Yeah, it's cool. Very good. What then? Yeah, interesting bit of trivia about uh, Taste of Blood, Dracula, and Dracula's Risen from the Grave. Um, for many years, you know, when the early video era came out, you know, you mm -hmm. saw Horror of Dracula. You saw the right, Curse right. of Frankenstein on the big clamshell boxes. And for many years, yeah. you couldn't get a hold of those two films in particular. And those two films were actually done under the moniker of Warner Brothers Seven Arts. Uh, and that was tied up legally for a number of years. Huh. It came that's, out why they, that's why they did not come out in the earliest days of, um, of video. Uh, they were tied up for about three or four years, five years, maybe. And this is the fourth movie, by the way. This is Warner Brothers Seven Arts. And that was a division of Warner Brothers that got kind of, it's kind of like John Wayne's films. There were like three or four films that got lost from the 50s. It got tied up in some legal pissing match somewhere. But anyhow, I'm glad. Does anybody have this on Blu-ray? And you guys have this on Blu-ray? That yeah. comes in that box set. Yeah, yeah, it's that a... box set of the four films that Peter showed. I gotta wrote. get that one. Because I mean, this looks great too. But I would love to see it on Blu-ray. Yeah. Now, is is do you know if this is, you know, a different cut? Is that uncut or is it all one cut? Do we know? These are all the uncut. Yeah. Um... The ones that are on that four the four film setup. That one would taste the blood and Dracula's risen from the grave. Yeah, Frank Simon must be this one, the one I have here, or the one that Pete has. Uh, the one that Peter has in the Blu-ray. That's what you, that's what you can get in Blu-ray, right? You can get a separate piece of it in Blu-ray separately, but yeah, that's this actually is the most. Uh, that's the most. Uh, let's say financially, yeah, savings-wise to get the yeah, four of them. On. Ninety-two minutes. I don't know how how long is the one you have, Rich. This is 90. ninety-two minutes. Okay, yeah, so it's the same. So probably the same, same cut. Yeah. Surprised nobody's it's mentioned weird. stars of Dracula. You know what's weird on these two? It's rated G. How is this rated G? I have no idea. Yeah. Well, you know, the rating system too sense. was was very different, you know, way back yeah. then. It should not be rated G. You know, look at I mean, I love the Planet of the Apes movies. Four of the five of the four out of the foes five movies are rated G. Yeah. You know, you know, you see you see Charlton Heston's ass in the original hey, Planet of the Apes, but Midnight you know, Cowboy was X. Yeah. So, you know, so it's, you know, it's insane. Right. It, it, so it's, you know. Well, look at, uh, isn't Jaws PG? Yeah. I was going to say Jaws, which is one of the that scariest movies of all off. time, that is, definitely is PG. Off. Yeah. But, you know, and we, I know we, uh, me and Pete have talked about the hot, the, this is totally off subject, but all the Friday the 13th that got cut to ribbons so they could get an R today, R, yeah. that would be laughed at. Those well, movies. PG thirteen today. Yeah, the, well, everything that got cut out would have been left back in, and it still would have been rated R. And that was yeah. based on blood, bloodshed, or right. massacre, or whatever. Something yeah, yeah. you know, there's two seconds more, too much blood in it. But right. nowadays, they, you know, they try to do horror right now because of our politically correct world. They they try to make most horror to be PG. There's no such thing as an R rating. Right. I think it's, it's they're really rare, pushing towards unless, with you unless, know with with The Walking Dead. Well, you know, which is beyond gory, which you could see yeah. on TV. You know, right. there'd be no problem. See that—that's a cable channel. Cable has a lot of, you know, cable has a lot of leeway. Uh, not True. cable as in not cable as in HBO, Cinemax, but FX and 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 uh, those AMC, which AMC shockingly, since you pay for that channel technically or somewhere along the lines, they have some leeway. Not right, much. But, it's, it's a warped. It's a you know, We we talked a couple a couple episodes ago about Piranha 3D. You know, when you have a severed penis floating in the middle of the screen in 3D, and it's an R-rated movie, you can pretty much fucking get away with anything nowadays. Well, look especially at in 4K. You guys, um, you guys watch Terrifier. How how over the top is that? Yeah, that was gory. Yeah, and that's rated really R. Yeah. Well, what was what was just that, one, just that one scene? You know, that one yeah. death. That could have been an X, right? Yeah, for sure. And in years I mean, ago, it would have been. What was that? What was day? Of the, what was the dead day of the dead rated when they pulled that was Joe unrated. Otto apart? That, that was, was unrated. Hard. No, that was unrated. They unrated. didn't rate it. Okay, gotcha. Okay, they couldn't you, get it more. Pretty grim. You know, yes. that's pretty grim. 
But today, maybe that would be an R. Yeah. Yeah. Today, they'd be showing at kids' parties. Yeah. <laughs> it would be a video game. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, how far we've come. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. My number two, I'm actually shocked that nobody has mentioned this yet. But I actually, I gave it all away. I wore the shirt today. Curse of the Werewolf, man. Oliver That's Reed. Classic. Oh, oh, love it. Mm. One of my favorite werewolf films of all time. I totally dig it. Yeah. Um, I think it's got, you know, uh, I don't remember who brought it up earlier. But man, the it's a it's a really cool period piece. The costumes are gorgeous. The cinematography is gorgeous. I love the makeup, the werewolf makeup. And it's bloody. And, you know, he, it, the blood is like, you know, if you, on the Blu-ray, the blood is like bright red. It's got, you know all the cleavage you want and all that kind of stuff and it's a, a great final act and I, I i think it's one of uh hammer's perfect films and uh, i've always loved it that's my it's my second favorite hammer film of all time and has been for ages so it, it's a great one so good it's amazing that you know hammer made all these dracula movies and all these frankenstein movies and all these mummy movies and they made one and, fucking werewolf movie i know that's and yeah my favorite the best why was there no creature well, that was a universal. What's you know, going on with that? Yeah, they could have done something, right? I guess the reptile, something. Maybe the reptile was the closest thing they got. Yeah, to, right. I guess. Yeah. I, well, I think I think Universal locked down on that artwork, that that costume yeah. design, yeah. like very much why when they did Curse of Frankenstein, right, they had a change of makeup. Head. Yeah, Universal yeah. locked down on that. This is our design. You yeah. Know, so let's see who knows. And the creatures are hard. I mean, how are you going to like? Yeah, you could recreate it, but you got to admit that that costume is pretty intense. You know, yeah. Oh, yeah. so it's pretty hard. But they, they wanted to make it a few years ago and it was going to be like kind of like part predator, part alien, part whatever with a big opening mouth. It's like, no, come on. No. And then, you, you know what know. they should have done? They should have redone it when they did the wolf band with uh, Benicio Del Toro. Mm -hmm. That was so well done. If they would have done a creature at the same time in that vein when they were, you know, on a roll with that movie, I think it would have been awesome because I really like that wolf band. And not, and not to change subject with that, I, I think that the Wolfman with Benicio del Toro uh, is short sold. I like great. it. I, that I think should have been the start well of the universe. Oh, yeah. That should have been the start of the reboot of the universe. And no, instead we've got Tom world. Cruise who lives through a plane crash, and then there's some mummy who's trying to, you know, That's jump cool. his bones. Uh, I don't know. It's just, just I never bizarre. even watched it. I it's never pretty cute no. though. I, no you know, I, I try. I open my mind. I sit and watch it a second time. Maybe I take more of my medical marijuana. It gets better. But it's, it's, you know, whatever I do. Nice. But it's, it's, it's the way to. Do way to deal with it and i'll tell you something else and not, again we're getting off track here but I, they came out with that invisible man film last year right it's okay which, again, which did so yeah. well that i've not seen it pandemic uh that that has actually spurred them on to do more films because now they just announced they're going to do another wolfman film but i don't even like that that invisible man film I, I, I like think. Hollow Man better than that. Okay. I, I absolutely like Hollow Man. Hollow Man was pretty good. Hollow Man's pretty good. The Invisible Man. Yeah. Movie, it's not. I don't. I don't want to give too much away. It's really not okay. an Invisible Man film. But anyway. Sure. That's true. Yeah. All right. Back to Dan for your number one. All right. And of all people to get us back on track, me, the guy that wanders off into space. <laughs> um, anyhow, my last pick is just something I took just to be sentimental. And just to be the fact that you know Hammer is uh, Hammer's a studio that was around for many years. Um, but I'm, I'm going to say uh, the mystery of Marie Celeste with Bella Lugosi. Wow. Yeah. That is a hammer film. It is. Yeah. Uh, hammer made like about four to six movies between 35 and 1936. And then they disappeared and they didn't come back until after the war. And they started of course with action and spy and comedies and things. And they got into the horror. So the mystery of Marie Celeste, because, uh, on top of that, uh, another one of, Lugosi's other great performances was not a Hammer film, which was um, Human Monster. I love the Human Monster. And but the mystery of Marie Celeste when they made it, um, it is not really a horror film. It's more of a basing on the legend of the Marie Celeste, uh, in which they play off. At that time in 1935, there was a lot of speculation and rumor of what had happened to the Marie Celeste, which, if anybody's unfamiliar, was a ship that was found floating uh, off of the Azores, I believe. Um, Everything was perfectly set. Food, there was food on the table. Nothing was disturbed. There was not a soul on board. And they had teamed it up as being supernatural to the point where there were two German sailors on the ship that may have murdered everybody and this and that. Uh, and by 1935, it was kind of the rumor was somebody had murdered everybody on the ship. 
And Bela Lugosi plays a character on the ship who is a survivor on the Marie Celeste. Uh, it's one of his better acting things. There's a couple of lines in the uncut British version that you cannot say nowadays in public. Um, and the American version of Force was cut by like 15 or 20 minutes. But it's a great little tight film. And it's got, you know, two words I could say in it. It's got Bela Lugosi. So that's why I threw that in. Figured it'd be the kind of like the guy sitting in the dugout getting ready to come in and throw the pitch. So it's a good one. And most people, I think, forget that that's a Hammer film. Yeah, that's a, I have that on DVD. That's, that's pretty good because I, you know, of course, have to have everything Lugosi ever did. So it's, it's good. It's good. Nice. All right, Chris. All right. I'm, I'm doing something I, I, I never do on the Hudson Valley Squares, but I'm, I'm pulling it out here, Pete. I'm doing an honorable mention, uh, Let Me In, which is uh, yes. the uh, remake of the, the, the Swedish uh, vampire flick. Uh, really good. Uh, one of the only new Hammer movies that I really liked. And a dishonorable mention, uh, I, I had always liked this until I rewatched it a couple days ago. And I'm like, man, this movie sucks. <laughs> and it's uh, To the Devil a Daughter. What a Devil fucking... Devil. The snooze fest beyond a snooze fest. Other than Natasha Kinski getting naked for two seconds, and she still looks like she needs to eat a couple sandwiches. And the big reveal is this monster that's trying to burrow itself into into uh, Natasha Kinski. But it's like the cutest little monster thing I've ever seen. Like I want to like hold it and 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 play with it and throw have a game of catch with it. I'm like, this is the stupidest thing I have ever seen. And uh, there's actually a great documentary on this older DVD where uh, Christopher Lee talks about it. And he's like, oh, the movie is a piece of shit. And Dennis Wheatley threw a fucking gasket when he saw this movie. And he's like, they, they started making the movie without a script and it's fucking terrible. Uh, but my all time favorite Hammer movie without question uh, horror of Dracula. Uh, yeah, I, I can't say enough about it other than uh, true story. Uh, I guess I was shit. I was in, I can't remember if it was a first grade or kindergarten, but my mom signed me up for the, the CCD, which is the religious thing. Yep. Uh, to go I did that you know, once a week school. Yeah. yeah. I went there. Yeah. And, you know, whenever you start, you either got to either be kindergarten or first grade. And true story. Uh, you know, we weren't super religious. So before I, well, we go, my mom goes, uh, well, you know how to do the sign of the cross, right? I go, yeah. I, re I remember this in, in my bedroom when I was whatever, six, five, six years old. Well, I was like, all right, well, let me see the sign of the cross. So I went like this, because that was what, what Peter Cushing did with the candelabras yes, that I had yes. seen as a kid in, in Horror of Dracula. So of course, uh, that's not really how you do the sign of the cross. But no, no. I know, I was, I was like five. But man, this is a great, great flick, uh, you know, and uh, Dan's right, the, the, you know, the uncut, the uncut version with the Japanese extra footage is, is it's amazing that they could find that footage. And uh, it's great. You know, I know I've said on other shows, I named Christopher Lee and uh, man, this, this movie is just unbelievable. I think he's the best Dracula ever. Uh, Peter Cushing is, is the definitive Van Helsing. Uh, I mean, I don't, I, I personally don't know if we'll ever see anybody uh, better in either role, but I, I kind of doubt it. Yeah, I don't. And, think how, and how they restored that Japanese footage. Oh, so when you uh, see that Japanese footage, what they took to restore yeah. to put it back into that British fit print, that film oh, yeah. was in pretty rough shape. Yeah, yeah, they, it's, yeah. it's unbelievable. You know, it's it's always you know now in days is totally different, but it is amazing to think, oh my god, you know, sixty years ago, you know, seven sixty five, whatever, that some of this footage you know is out there. Because now everybody that makes a movie is always thinking, well, you know, you got to keep all the extras for, you know, DVDs and Blu-rays and all foreign things or whatever else. But back then, back then things just vanished. Yeah. Snips and clips, just, they're gone. Just thrown away. Yeah. I will say to the devil, a uh, daughter, um, it's got its moments, but that was basically, that was the death knell for Hammer. That, in, fact, in fact, if I remember correctly, that was the last film they did in the 70s. That was, that was the last horror movie they ever did. And it's <laughs> the fascinating thing was it was apparently in the, in the UK, it was a big hit. Yeah. They made a ton of money, which I, I didn't know, but they said Hammer was so underwater by that point, it didn't matter. They were I mean, they were doomed. Christopher Lee and Peter Helsing, uh, I'm sorry, Christopher, Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing in the title was a moneymaker. Yeah. And I think by the time 
you know, they both came along, they were, they were working actors and who said, you know, Hammer didn't take advantage of them, paid them a little bit of money, this and that. And as their status grew, Hammer couldn't afford them anymore. And I think, you know, it's not the fact that, you know, that they grow them to the ground, but, you know, putting Peter Cushing in there and they use Peter Cushing and, 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 and uh, Christopher Lee were in well over 20 movies together, not just horror. Oh, yeah. They were in films right up to the end of the House of Long Shadows. Um, but that was that was a money making, you know, who's your star you're going to attach to your film? Yeah. You put Christopher Lee in there, it's like you've got a guaranteed box office. Yeah. Uh, and that, and that was, was a huge punch. You know, you forget too, he, he was huge in the 70s, man. I mean, oh, yeah. you know, man with the golden gun, and uh, he, he was in a lot, man. And then he ran right through Lord of the Rings. And oh, wow. I was going to say, I talk mean, about right to the going, end. Going out on heavy high. Metal you know, the freaking just, Star Wars trilogy and the Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah. my God. I mean, he was a rock star. Yeah, he even really did, was. Even did, even did heavy metal albums, if you recall. Yeah. yeah so it's yeah. like, he was a true rock star and uh, kept his dignity about him. Yep. yep. And you know, a lot of people, I don't know if you're already, I don't know if many people watch this, but, you know, in the end, him and, him and uh, Cushing were best of friends. Yeah. And, you know, he was devastated when Peter Cushing died, you know, but they were best of friends, which makes for a great, uh, a great working relationship, I guess. So yep. that's, that's all good and said, or said and done. All right, Rich, what do you got for your number one? Last one. Back to my dinosaurs. Nice. Right. I knew somebody to do that. Yes. Because I love dinosaurs as a kid and I love Godzilla and King Kong and all those kind of movies. So. Yeah, when I saw this, I was so sold. You know, dinosaurs coming to life. Ray Harryhausen special effects are so good in this. <clears throat> Just that one fight, the one, what is it? The Triceratops and the Ceratosaurus mm -hmm. in this is incredible still. Just the way the camera moves around when it gets behind the rock and you're looking through the rock and watching the fight from the people's point of view yep. still looks incredible on film. Yeah, that's Always loved it. That's a powerhouse Harry House in uh, production right there. Yeah. yeah, it still looks great. All and the effect. Another one of those films, like the film is so like fast moving and everything like that. There's like no dialogue except for you know, what they say, like one word or was a took or yeah. I don't know. There's like, one you don't even know like, what they're saying. Yeah, it doesn't even over. matter. Yeah, You're just watching, you know, how they're moving around just to carry the story of how they're surviving, you know, and fighting against the other tribe. But it's really about those visuals of when the dinosaurs and creatures are on screen. It looks great. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I dig that a lot. That that also, that one and um, uh, what was the other one I said? The reptile are right out, right outside my top ten. I love them both. I, I could probably easily, if we do, if we were to do this again in a month, I'd probably find a way to squeeze one million years BC into mine. But um, well, you know, kind of predictably, my favorite is Horror of Dracula as well. This is just an absolute classic one Didn't of the best. All all of us have it on our list, right? Everyone. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah. I just, I just didn't want to mention it. Like I said, I knew somebody else would mention it. And, you know, I try to get in from like, try to come in from the outside, yeah. you know, with some weird stuff, but uh, I like all hammer that. films, even the lost continent. Uh, but I, I <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to throw out a couple of uh, honorable mentions just because nobody mentioned mm -hmm. it tonight. So uh, I, um, the abominable snowman. That's hmm. a good one. Which I like a lot. Uh, like and then one, yeah. Fear in the Night, with which has uh, Cushing, yeah, and Joan Collins, a real mm. creepy, weird movie. Um, and that's it. They, my other honorable mentions, everybody mentioned. But uh, so, which uh, which films only got mentioned once tonight? Does anybody have one in their list that only got one mention? I think Curse oh. of the Werewolf for me, I think is the only one. I Die, My Darling for me. Yeah, yep. Reptile. Reptile. Uh, Curse is uh, Plague of the Zombies. Yep. I think anybody else had that on their list. Seven Golden Vampires, right? No, no, Rich. You right. have... Me and Chris picked the Golden Vampires. Yep. And I got two others, the two dinosaur movies. Nobody picked those. That's yep. right. And we did those. And, uh, oh, and Dr. Jekyll. Well, and well Man Maniac and, uh, uh, and, uh, and <laughs> the mystery of the Marie Celeste. Uh, you yes. know, so, <laughs> yes. Speaking of uh, Dr. That's Jekyll, true. in this set, I watched... The two, the two faces, faces of Dr. Jekyll? That's not really good. good. I couldn't get into it. No, oh, I like that. That's, that's going cool. from no facial hair to facial hair, yeah. and that's it. I'm like, that's all you're going to do? Faces. <laughs> what? Two faces. I guess. It's like 
It's like Clark Kent with glasses and no glasses. They did like, the reverse, though. They they did it. They did the reverse. So when he when he turns into the Jekyll part, he's actually the suave, good looking, debonair he party did, animal yeah. guy. And when he's yeah. in, in Jekyll mode, he's like the right. down in the dumps, hairy, you know, soft spoken. Yeah. All it's just we really it's a weird movie, but I, I think it kind of works. Yeah, I, don't I couldn't know. get I couldn't get into it. I watched it again, tried it, see if it would make my top ten, and I was like, eh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Some of these films I have not seen in years, so I have to revisit them. Um, you know, it's been probably since I saw them in the theater or on late night television or whatever it was. Uh, but some of the, ma the major ones. But I want to I share one thing. You know, I think one of the downfalls of, of, of Hammer films was the fellows that were the, in the distribution end of it in the United States. I don't know if they formed, it wasn't Amicus Productions, uh, but it was one of those film companies that were putting in a lot of the British films in the early 70s and went head to head with Hammer. Tygon? And things, huh? Tygon? Was it Amicus? Huh? Is either Amicus or Tygon? Those right. Are, and they, they, that, was, that, was found, that was founded by two guys that did, were in charge of distribution in the US. And they were able to grab Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing into films. And so they were going oh. head to head with, you know, and they were coming up with that newer, wild, you know. On that, on that note, Amicus had Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing in the skull. I'm looking at that right, right. now. Yeah. Yeah. So but there we go. Getting, getting back 60, to those. 65. Yep. So getting back to those outsiders, something I threatened to show you earlier. We were talking about the um, bevy of beauties that played in the Hammer films. And this is a film that I actually watched one day in an afternoon on Saturday. And I sat around and watched it a second time for only one scene. Okay. And this is. The lovely Ingrid Pitt, as she pops literally out of her casket in the house that drip blood. Nice. Yeah. And yeah, that is a thing when you sat there and you went, oh my God, I'm paying another 50 cents for that matinee. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and uh, they took the hammer thing and they you know, took it a maybe a cup size bigger. I don't know. But um, that was a moment I think that has struck many young men watching. Hammer or British based horror. And that was the creme de la creme, the grand finale. That's how it's supposed to work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it's another good warp movie, too, is Countess Dracula. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a Even good one. Even though the title is kind of hokey because it has nothing to do with that. But, uh, you know, that, that's, that's a pretty entertaining one as well. Yeah. There's so many good ones. So many yeah, good man. ones. Good stuff. Yeah. So there you have it, everybody. Uh, our 10 favorite. Hammer horror films. Uh, I know there's a lot we didn't mention. I'm amazed that nobody mentioned any of the the mid middle Frankenstein films. We talked about the first one, the last one, but all those ones in the middle, some good ones. Some of those are kind of kind of hokey, but uh, Frankenstein created woman. Frankenstein. Yeah. So that's that's my favorite. I think of the of the middle ones. Frankenstein created woman because it's different. It's totally different. Yeah, yeah. There's so many good films though that uh, just oh and. Quatermass is another one that was only mentioned once, Rich. That's oh good. yes, yeah, yeah, and and they're both good. The, I like the I like the ones of Brian Donnelly, which is the fifties ones that um, that that Rich was talking about. Yeah, they're they're all pretty good actually. Yeah, I gotta watch the next two again. It's been a while. Yeah, they're good. They're good. All right, everybody. So uh, if we missed any of your favorites, list them in the comments below. It'd be cool to see what everybody comes up with on their favorite uh, horror, horror, hammer horror films. I had, had trouble saying that twice today. But uh, I want to thank Dan and Chris and Rich for uh, putting together their list and talking all sorts of hammer today. This was a lot of fun. Uh, you could tell, obviously, we love these 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 films quite a bit and uh, I always look back fondly on them and enjoy watching them uh, whenever I can. So uh, make sure you visit us on the web at www.seaoftranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time and every single Thursday with the Monsters Den. Uh, Big G's coming up next week. So stay tuned for that, everybody. For Dan and Chris and Rich, I am Pete Pardo. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>